I'm actually going to go ahead and skip the types of forces we encounter. Um, I want to come back to that a little bit later, and I actually want to get into drawing free body diagrams. So um, just real quick, a free body diagram is um, how we represent the various forces acting on an object. Um, we use arrows and label those arrows. Now there's a number of rules for free body diagrams, but I'll just get some basic ones down. Number one, um, each force gets an arrow, all properly labeled. Um, two, um, weight slash force of gravity always points straight down. Um, next, tension always goes out of objects. Um, I'm sure there are some others, but these are really some, some good basic guidelines. So for example, let's just jump in and take a look at, at this mass. So um, I have a mass resting on a surface, and remember the Veritasium video that we saw, um, the Canadian dude. Um, we've got the normal force acting up on the object, and we have the weight force acting downwards, which I'll label FG. And then we have this force F here, if you draw that. Ah, so there's an extra rule that I want to add always point arrows going out of object, never into. So let me give you an example of something that we'd never see. Like I'd never want to see um, a free body diagram like this. Like we wouldn't do like, oh, here's F pointing here, and then here's FG and FN. We just, we don't do that. That's just not how we do free body diagrams, okay? Now for this next one, let's actually do a more careful free body diagram on this guy. So um, I'm going to actually label this just a little bit differently. I'm going to call the force here N on big M and weight of big M. And then we have this tension force. The rule for tension is um, tension always goes away from the object. So I have the tension force like that. And for little m, I'm going to have tension pointing up and the weight of little m pointing straight down. Let's finish these up. So here, I've got a free body diagram for an object on what, this is called an inclined plane, by the way, that's what this little dude's named. And let's um, actually label the forces. So um, if you wanted to, some students had requested that I draw the free body diagram on the object. So you would have a normal force on big M here. And remember the rule for weight. Weight force always points straight down. So I don't care that there's an inclined plane there. Earth pulls the object straight down. Now for here, let's do something similar. We're going to have um, little m, so I'll have tension going up and weight of little m going downwards. And um, let's see, on big M, I'm going to, I'll draw it here to make it easier for people. So we'll have the normal on big M. We'll have the weight of big M pointing straight down. And we're going to have a tension force going to the left this way. I guess I can copy that here. So N on big M, weight of big M, and tension going up like that. Finally, for the last one, this is the first one where we're going to actually see um, third law pairs. So I'll have, um, just label this carefully, so I'm going to have um, the weight on mass 1, the normal on mass 1 pushing it up. I'm going to have a force to the right. Now here's the thing, M1 wants to go forward, but it bumps into M2, so what that means is there's a normal on 1 because 2 pushes on it and hinders its progress. And then for mass 2, we have the normal on 2, we have the weight of 2 acting down. Now, F pushes M1, but it doesn't push M2 directly. In fact, what's responsible for pushing mass 2 is that there's the re this is an action force, two, 1 being blocked by 2, and the reaction force is that 2 then gets pushed by block 1. So this is an action-reaction pair right here. So I guess if I wanted to add one more little rule to our forces things, I would also say the following. I would say um, forces 
can only apply to objects they directly touch. Um, so that's kind of it for our free body diagram practice, and I hope that's helpful.